My name is Clarissa Fortune. I am an IFBB figure pro. That happened in 2021. I got my pro card in nationals, December 2021. Super special day. I actually got my pro card with both of my best friends at the time as well, which was crazy. You know, it's one thing to go perfect, like get your pro card, but then to get it with people too is super special. Um, my best friend's actually doing her pro debut this year. So I'm really excited for her. I am a personal trainer, online nutrition coach. I, you know, bartend on the side. I do, um, I did just get another job. What am I doing? I'm a, so my husband's a power lifter and I've, you know, been, I've done meets before in the past and I've had athletes who have done meets in the, in the past as well. And my husband's probably, it's probably one of his last meets in September. And I decided I'm going to take on a couple athletes and prep them into, into the meet. We we've done that in the past before, uh, him and I, as a team, but this is the first time I'll be doing it kind of on my own and having my own athletes. So I'm really excited for that. Um, sort of wearing the powerlifting coach handler hat there. I am from Texas. I'm not really a fan of any sports. Unfortunately, when people ask me like what sports I follow, I follow bodybuilding. <laughs> um, it, my, my family's Cowboys fans, I guess, but whatever. We lived in Houston all, all last year and I got berated on for being from Dallas. And I was like, listen, I'm not from Dallas, guys. I'm from South Fort Worth. It's not the same. <laughs> I'm basically from the country. Yeah, my high school didn't even have a football team, honestly. Wow. So I was just like, yeah, we were really small, really small school. I played volleyball all through high school. Didn't really do much in college, but um, I joined the, my first gym in 2013, right out of high school. Joined the gym. Uh, my dad was going to one at the time and he had some buff friends. So they were like telling me what to do. You know, the, the guys from the gym and uh, training, you know, I, in the gym and like getting to know people and everything. I worked out for probably about five years and I saw some other girls. You didn't ask, but I'm telling you what got me into bodybuilding. Are you struggling with the common challenges of marketing and managing systems? Well, let me introduce you to our new sponsor, Big Play Digital Solutions. At Big Play Digital, they specialize in helping fitness professionals like yourself overcome these hurdles. Their mission is simple, to provide seamless support in digital marketing and system management so you can focus on what you do best, serving your clients. Now here's the reality. Many of us fitness professionals find ourselves spending more time on administrative tasks and marketing efforts than actually working with our clients. It's time to change that. Big Play Digital has the perfect solution. First, they create and execute effective digital marketing strategies tailored to your needs. From boosting your online visibility, attracting the right clients, and boosting retention, they've got your back. SEO, email marketing, social media marketing, content creation, they've got the expertise. But that's not all. They also offer comprehensive system management solutions. Their business management software, specifically designed for the fitness industry, streamlines processes, automates administrative tasks, and enhances client communications. More time, less hassle. The result, a more streamlined, efficient, and profitable fitness business that can compete effectively in today's digital landscape. Sounds like the solution you've been looking for, right? So if you're ready to take your fitness business to the next level, I encourage you to connect with Big Play Digital Solutions. They'll tailor their services to meet your specific needs and help you succeed. Don't miss out on this opportunity. Empower your fitness business with Big Play Digital Solutions. Connect with them today. What kind of got me started with bodybuilding, I was working out at a, a little bit of a bigger, bigger gym and... I saw other girls getting ready for shows and stuff and they looked so good. I was like, Whoa, that's cool. Like, and they're dieting and they're working out and I'm already coming to the gym every day. I could probably eat better. And I was like, that's something I could do at the time. Uh, I was vegetarian and was raised that way for 23 years. So it was a bit of a sort of brainwashing situation where I physically can't eat meat. So I was like, I, I have to find a coach who will be able to like, let me, you know, be trained that way or make my meals that way. Cause I had heard little rumors that were like, Oh yeah. So-and-so makes, makes his athletes eat fish or this or that. I was like, well, that's not, I'm not going to do that. Um, so I was able to find a coach who um, prepped me for my first show, completely vegetarian. We did a lot of, uh, I don't want to say a lot, but we did tofu, um, some veggie meat supplementation kind of things. Um, there were such like portions where I was eating egg whites, three meals a day, <laughs> a lot of egg whites. 
but um yeah it was it was a really fun prep i she was actually there my entire show day experience which you know now that i'm a little bit more involved in the sport i see like that's not the case for most athletes most athletes are going to shows by themselves and i was like wow i was truly blessed to have a coach literally hold my hand the entire time she was backstage with me she i i don't think she went to the tan with me i think i was able to do that on my own <laughs> but pretty much just like helped me through everything and and i'm all i will always be grateful for her um and her guidance we were she coached me into um all, actually all of my current shows to date i had the same coach for um so yeah, that was kind of what got me into bodybuilding. I was just got got to the point where I was like, I'm, I'm fit. I, I like it the way I look. What's next? What, what what else can I do? And I saw girls doing stuff that looked fun. I liked the way they looked. You know, they didn't look like that all the time. They still had their off seasons. They had fun after their shows and stuff. Um, but the rigidity and the structure of it, I was really um, drawn to. I can't say that I've never cheated on a prep diet. Um, I do have issues with peanut butter. <laughs> But, you know, those are things you, you learn as you go and you, you know, you confess to your coaches and, and you move on. Um, I did not have the best first off season. I made the inaugural mistake of blowing my diet right off, right out the gate. My mom, bless her heart. I love her. She bought me this. Oh gosh, it was huge. It was a goodie basket, not a bag, a basket, like huge and she had been taking notes of all the things I'd been craving over the last three months. Um, and everything was in that basket. I ended up having to throw some of it away. Um, once I realized that, so, you know, post show you, you know, I was given a diet, a reverse plan. And I don't know why I thought this was okay. I was eating my meal plan and everything else <laughs> so I wasn't like substituting stuff out like oh well I'll just like take this out no I was eating full meals and then I'd go to like fuzzies taco shop with some friends I had like a bunch of dates planned after the show I I think we went to like Chewy's there was a biscuit place one of like all the restaurants after like that week after the show a month in I'm like oh everything hurts like I feel I feel thick. Like it wasn't just fat. It was like distension. And I, I wasn't getting like weird acne or anything like that. Um, it's completely natural. It was just water retention and just food. My body didn't know what to do with the zero to a hundred. So I went through that, you know, first show experience and I, I eventually got back on a, it took me a month to figure out like maybe you shouldn't be eating a basket of junk food clerks every night. Um, so we got back on plan and I oh, love myself. Um, I ended up doing a show three months later. I was like, oh, I got fat. I should probably compete again. Whoo. Again, every first competitor's mistake. I've been there. I made those mistakes. So now I, I feel like it made me a better coach being able to be like, listen, no, you don't want to do that. I promise you because I have stage shots now where I, I took a three month off season, got fat. We prep. So for, for time, time reference, 2018, I prepped from February show was in April. I took my off season April after the show, it was the end of April. So May to the end of July, cause I wanted to celebrate my birthday. End of July, we started prep and my shows were basically Halloween week, October, November. So we did back to back shows. Those pictures from that, so all of, I did three shows in one year with a little bit of a gap. I actually got smaller. I lost muscle because I did not have a structured off season. You know, that was just a get fat. And then we had to lose all that fat again. And when you're in a extreme deficit, you are, you know, you can't retain, you're not going to retain all the muscle that you build. You're going to end up losing some. Unfortunately, that is part of the process. Um, and so, yeah. I, I did three shows in one year and got smaller. Learned a lot from that experience. I did get engaged in 2018. So when I, I got engaged, I was like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take next year off, plan my wedding, get married, and then I'm going to take a real off season. And that was when I talked with my coach. She was like, I love this for you. Yes. I don't know why she let me compete in the first place. But she did. Um, you know, it is what it is. 
I, I don't know how many athletes she was coaching at the time. And, and she, she's not, she wasn't a yes man by any means, but she could tell I was excited about it. And, you know, it, bodybuilding has changed a lot in the fi- last five years too, yeah. as far as like um, what people are talking about and what they're not. So I, I think that that, that has played a big role and, you know, it's me growing as an athlete too. So I, I did get married in 2019, um, had our backyard wedding. It was great. We went on, went to the Bahamas for a honeymoon, came back. And that was when I started my first structured off season. So I was working with a coach all the way through the rest of 2019 for, so we had like seven months <laughs> of, of like a real off season. I owe very little, um, back backstory there and, and after my show in november i did a lot better and not being an a-hole afterwards i i didn't get fat for my wedding i, I was able to to keep things it, i wasn't like stage lean for my wedding by any means but i was comfortable and i wasn't i wasn't fat i still looked like i lift a little bit so that was nice um but yeah i had, had my first real off season 2019 and then january 2020 we started prep um that was fun prepped all the way through to april six ish found out my show got canceled <laughs> so we ended up we, we prepped on and we ended up doing another show in uh southwest npc southwest in august j- end of july 2020 um, and then i did my first national show at a junior junior usa's in south carolina in 2020 that was a experience in itself um and then, and then what happened? I'm like, what, what happened after this? <laughs> um, yeah, I ended up getting second place at nationals in, in South Carolina. And that was all like, whoa, out of, um, there were seven girls for, for reference. I, I always hate when people say like second place, they don't tell you how many people there were like <laughs> two out of three or two out of two. It's like, so there were seven other girls and I, and I got second and I was like, whoa. Cause I mean, some of the girls I beat had been doing this for years and, uh, this is my very first show to get second place. Junior USA's, you did have to get um, top three in the overall to get your pro card. So I didn't stand a chance on my pro card that year. But to, to still place at a national or even junior national show was really special for me. Um, I took that the rest of that year off. I did my I did a powerlifting meet in December. So that was really fun. I um, was able to like train more for strength from September to December. And then January through to July transition back into more of a bodybuilding off season more structured structured bodybuilding off season and then started prep in july didn't tell anybody just started prep you don't have to talk about it guys like it's this is a sugar-free fresca i don't i don't know the girl just made it for me it's a swig have you heard of that a new little juice store that popped up so i thought i'd try it today um but one thing that made the prep easier for me is that I just, the things I was doing in my off season were the same things I was doing in prep, drinking black coffee. I was you know doing my cardio, going to the gym, lifting heavy, uh, hanging out with people who understood the process, um, surrounding yourself with individuals who, you know, aren't food focused, you know, we're actually going to go and, and do activities and, and have fun and, and make memories. Um, so you know, friend circles changing a little bit and my family also realizing that bodybuilding wasn't going anywhere. (laughs) So, you know, me bringing my meals to family dinner and stuff and, you know, Oh, you're still doing that. Yes, I am. (laughs) We're going to be here a while. Um, so yeah, I I prepped all through all the way to December. We did a, a regional show, the battle of Texas in December and I won the overall that was my very first overall. That was my goal. Um, honestly, I'd never won an overall. And as an athlete, you know, that's kind of like a stepping stone before you, you get your pro card. You should be able to win an overall at a, at a regional show right now. Texas is a is a beast in itself. So winning winning an overall in Texas, that was like super special to me because I was like, OK, if I can win an overall here in Texas, which has some of the best athletes in the world, has some of the hardest amateur competition then I should be able to go to nationals and at least stack up in that first call out. Right. 
Um, so I won the overall. I had all, a lot of my family there, friends. I had some friends like flying in from Kentucky. One came up from Houston. It was just really special because um, I, I kept the circle small who knew that I was competing. Um, I don't really like I don't know, like watching other people. I'm just like, you show up. It doesn't really matter who shows or it matters who shows up, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. Like who knows at the end of the day, you're going to show up. She's going to show up. And you just hope that you look the best, right? Um, I think coaches have a tendency of like, my athlete's going to win. No, matter, you know, and it's just like, we'll see. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so it was really cool going into that show and like nobody really knowing. I I milked it a little bit. I waited till check-ins had 10 minutes left to go. So like, I'm just going to wait till everybody's gone and nobody's going to know. <laughs> like, um, I think I ran into a friend of mine and he told me later, as I ran into him, I was like, oh, hey. And if you've ever seen an athlete one day out, they're not cute. <laughs> so so he sees me at check-ins, but did not connect the dots that I was competing. And I, he told me later, he's like, yeah, you looked rough. I was like, brother, <laughs> <laughs> you thought I would just look like that? And like show up to something? <laughs> uh, it cracked me up, though, because um, it really like goes to show that I, I looked ready. Um but they just thought I was sick. I'm not sure. Anyways, so two weeks later, we went to um, nationals in Orlando. Stayed with my friends. Um, she was competing. I was competing. We were in different classes, which is key, guys, <laughs> to keeping your friends. Just, no, it was. It would have been, you know, fine regardless. They only give away two pro cards in each class, though. So would we have both gotten our pro cards had we been in the same class? Probably not unfortunately um and just the yeah the the people in each class were different right so i ended up getting second again out of 14 girls but first and second got their pro card at nationals so i got my pro card and that's the story of that so i mean obviously a lot to to kind of talk about within that but going back to something you mentioned at the beginning and and something i want to kind of talk about for a second are you still on that? Are you, are you still vegetarian? And is that how you still kind of operate? Yeah, I'm so sorry. So like I said, my, my first prep was completely vegetarian. Um, my second prep was not. So my, my coach was kind of um, not pressuring me by any means, but just like, hey, have you tried this? Or have you tried that? Well, we were at a hibachi restaurant. It's my favorite, husband's favorite restaurant. And I tried one of his little shrimps. And I was like... This doesn't even because my, my fear was that it was going to feel like meat. It was going to like be uh, like a like like uh, fleshy or whatever. For some reason, the shrimp didn't feel like meat to me. It just felt like overcooked tofu, like really tough. Um, it also tasted great because it was hibachi and everything tastes great at hibachi. And so I, I messaged my coach. I was like, hey, I think I could do shrimp in my in my meals in addition to the egg whites. Um, my family is not. It, it might, you know, I mentioned my mom's vegetarian and I was still living at home because I wasn't married. Um, so I had to cook all my food at home. Well, my mom, not okay with me cooking meat in the house. So I had to be real sneaky about my meal prep for that prep. I think I ended up cooking some of it at, at my, my boyfriend's house or fiance, husband, whatever. We weren't married at the time, but I would cook some at his house. I would cook some when they were all asleep or you know things like that just so I wasn't like in anybody's way or making a big deal about it because I was trying to like keep it on the down low yeah. I didn't want to like break her heart either that I <laughs> left the left the family fold none of my siblings are vegetarian it was just me and my brother that were kind of left um everyone else had gone to the dark side so <laughs> that in 2018 those two those two shows in that time period i did have shrimp in addition to the egg whites um we didn't end up needing the tofu i think we did have like still a black bean veggie patty at some point um egg whites have never been a problem for me i know some people can't digest them well but i still eat egg whites to this day and have no issues the um next next step to that I ended up having, um, I don't know if you've heard of this, the fish smell. I, I got pulled aside. Mm -hmm. I got pulled aside by some of my coworkers that they could not stand to be in the room with me because I smelled so bad. And I guess they had drawn straws and one of them decided to be the one to tell me. Um, 
she did it in the nicest way possible without like being a little rude because obviously my feelings are hurt a little bit but also like you need to do something i texted my coach she's like oh no okay so w- what happened was i was eating so much that my body couldn't process it and it was the fish oil was seeping out of my pores because wow. i was taking a fish oil supplement in addition to are you looking for a supplement company that can help take your fitness game to the next level look no further than all sport pharmaceuticals Their cutting-edge supplements are scientifically formulated to give you the edge you need in the gym and in life. Whether you're looking to build muscle, increase endurance, or boost recovery time, Allsport Pharmaceuticals has you covered. And with a wide range of products designed for people of all levels, you're sure to find the perfect supplement for your needs. So why wait? Give your body the support it deserves with Allsport Pharmaceuticals. Visit their website today to learn more and start achieving your fitness goals. Are you tired of struggling with marketing and system management? Well, Big Play Digital is here to change the game for you. Their mission is simple, to provide seamless support in digital marketing and system management so you can focus on what truly matters, delivering exceptional fitness service to your clients. Big Play Digital understands the unique demands of the fitness industry. They've tailored their software and services specifically for your needs. From SEO to email marketing, social media, and content creation, they've got it all covered. Big Play Digital offers comprehensive system management solutions designed specifically for fitness professionals. It's time to take your fitness business to new heights. Probably 150 grams of shrimp twice a day. Wow. So 300 grams of shrimp twice a day in addition to like a fish oil supplement. So we backed off the shrimp to just once a day. And I was, I started like, I was showering. I was doing essential oils. I was doing everything. I was like, I'm so sorry, guys. I wish I, I didn't know. Uh, it went away. Um, when I mentioned it to my husband and my mom, she was like, I haven't noticed anything. And then she starts sniffing. She's like, now that you mentioned it. And so I was like, well, frick that now. <laughs> so we got it under control. It has not been an issue since, thankfully. Um, after that show, uh, 2021, we implemented salmon and tilapia. So I do have three other fish sources in my meals now. So shrimp, salmon, tilapia. I've had scallops. Um, I think I've had, I've had swordfish. I've had some other things um, fish wise, but I do identify as a pescatarian (laughs) to this day. I I still can't bring myself to eat land animals. Interesting. It's crazy because most people (laughs) would try like, like people that let's just say normally eat meat have never tried shrimp they try it and they, they hate it because the texture right like it's that it's just so different than than it's rubbery fish mm-hmm. it's different than obviously you know beef or poultry or whatever else like <clears throat> just has like a such a distinctive um like you said kind of rubbery texture and then the taste too like yeah it's interesting that you found that more like you you found that appealing whereas a lot of other <laughs> people coming from like a meat background would find that less appealing yeah yeah and same and vice versa you know coming from a meat background and having to cut it out i know for a lot of people that's hard and for me i I don't crave chicken nuggets because i've never had them i don't crave burgers because i've never had one um and people are just like how are you living your life I'm like, i don't know but my cholesterol is great <laughs> and so does that make food for you i mean you did mention like the the sweets and things but does that make f- like <laughs> having like a a diet where you don't have any restrictions right like somebody that just eats whatever they eat meat they eat vegetables whatever um i feel like that since they have free reign it might be harder to like have this restrictive additive to their diet like okay we're going to do a prep or we're going to like focus more on you know just diet for whatever purpose for you did you find that it was easier to almost like manipulate your diet because you had already implemented this like partial restriction on what you could and couldn't eat not really um because i am a sweetsaholic i'm a carby so when i think of like a normal person a normal person to me when i was normal was you know tacos pizza um i can still have burgers most places you don't know it because you're not looking but most places have veggie burgers the impossible burger is super popular um there's also like black bean patties and this and that um but because veganism has become so popular (laughs) a vegetarian can get away with almost anything so any restaurant that you want to go to i can go to and eat whatever i want um i don't say that my diet's healthier because what i like isn't healthy you know french fries and 
I like ice cream, brownies. I'm like, it's, it's, it's tough sometimes. Um, you know, especially right now I'm in like a structured off season. So when I want something that's like sweeter, I, I do, I do substitute now. <laughs> I don't eat on top of my meal plan. Oh gosh, I'd be fired. Um, <laughs> But I make substitutions. So, you know, I've got rice and honey in my post-workout. And I have some coconut oil floating over here. So what I'll do is I'll do like a gluten-free Oreo. Um, I can't have gluten right now for uh, histamine reasons. But I'll have, you know, how many X amount of gluten-free Oreos that are the same carb quantity of my rice and honey. And then whatever fats. I have to be careful because the fats, they they get a little high over there. Um, But... Yeah. So that's kind of how I I make that work. Um, There's also like the protein ice creams that are are helpful. So there's still a lot of structure to it. um, But I've never had a like, I've never thought of myself as being like, oh, this is easy for me because I was vegetarian. Like, we weren't healthy vegetarians. (laughs) We were like, my mom cooks really well. and, And that's one thing that made like nutrition easy for me is because she was always really good about having a protein having a vegetable and having a carb with every meal we were never allowed as kids to have like macaroni and cheese and mashed potatoes like we can't have two starches in one meal um so that's just an example of that but we would we'd still have like sloppy joes there's a a vegetarian version that y'all would hate um (laughs) (laughs) There's, there's, you know, Frito pies and, and things like that. So there's a lot of fun foods that I was able to enjoy. Get cinnamon rolls are vegetarian. Oh, my favorite, um, yeah. Right? They're so good. <laughs> Biscuits and gravy. You just don't get it with the sausage and gravy. Um, pancakes, waffles, really any breakfast food. You just, you just don't have the bacon. You just don't have the sausage. Um, you just take those, those out and it's fine. Um, mm-hmm. But I think most people just don't think about that. It's good because it's so ingrained in their lifestyle. Right. Um, Cause I've been asked my whole life, what do you eat? I'm like, whatever I want <laughs> yeah. without the meat in it. Right. Yeah. I, went, um, I wouldn't say full vegan. So, I mean, you can't really call it vegan if it's not vegan. Right. But I went, I would say maybe like 75% vegan for about, uh, I don't know, maybe six or seven months just mm-hmm. to kind of try it out. And, um, it was it was definitely challenging at first, but as you kind of got into like the swing of knowing, like okay, these are your options, it does become more of like a, a pattern and a routine and a habit and things like that. So yeah, uh, also did an Instagram poll the other day, and I was you know asking if anyone's ever tried vegetarian or vegan, and I was surprised by the number of people that had tried one or the other. You know, I just think it, it's it's good to keep it keep your mind open to different things, not necessarily for you know, the, the morality reason or for the eco reasons or just for any particular reason, just for the fact that like you, you have an open mind about it. Like, okay, I'm mm-hmm. going to try it, see if it works better for my system. Cause some people work really yeah. good. Their system works really well on, you know, on, on mostly plants and some people's work, work must much better on mostly meat, you know? So it's, it's a shame if people have like this, this thought about something without trying it themselves. Agreed. Agreed. And that is, I think a, a benefit of having so many options for, for vegans is that you can go vegan and then still have, you know, the impossible burger, which if you don't think meat is actually really great. You know, if you, and they have chicken nugget variations that if you don't think chicken nugget, you just think food, it's a good food. Right. <laughs> Does that make sense? No. Yeah. Like you, you have a certain, like a different expectation going mm-hmm. into what it's going to be. Exactly. Like I think too many people are like, trying to make the the vegan food too much like meat and it's just not it's just not going to work out that way um so going into it with like this is this is a food that i'm going to try and it's high protein or you know whatever it's it's made out of but it's a meat substitute um and it probably tastes really good so just give that a try um i'm not an advocate for it is still tough being a bodybuilder and a vegan at the same time just because of the carb to protein ratios there but like you mentioned, some bodies do better with one versus the other. So finding out what works best for you. And then if you happen to be able to like build muscle really well on that meal type or, you know, food variations, then then more power to you. So are you, do you, do you, um, utilize like whey protein at all, or do you use vegan sources for like your supplementation? 
I, I do an isolate way. I've done, so you mentioned, you said something interesting about like do, being vegan or vegetarian for the ecosystem or the animal friendliness. It was never about that for me. Um, mine was just because I was raised that way. So, you know, I love animals, but I'm not picketing in the streets for their rights. Um, I love the environment, but I did forget my recycle bags today. So bad <laughs> eco is here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it's not it wasn't really for those reasons it was more so just a, a mental block like I, I just can't do it um there's no real reason behind it um i forgot your question um just like which type of like um uh, oh the way the protein right right, right. Yeah. so yeah i've done um a way isolate for for almost ever i've tried the vegan ones and i did not find any i liked times and things have evolved since that time when i tried those and i know I know now that there are some that are actually really good. I heard the raw um, vegan is, is great. Um, Ve Vega makes a really good one. Um, but I don't, I don't use those. My, my go-to is Dimatize ISO 100, <laughs> the OG. Um, I'll also do like Core Power 42, the, the Fairlife protein shakes. Those are great. Um, not a big muscle milk fan, but if it's the only thing in the gas station, then I'll buy that. Um, but typically post-workout, I'm doing a powder, which is an isolate way. Just as a gym bro, that's, that's what I I know, you know, back right. in the GNC days. <laughs> right. Yeah, 100%. Um, something kind of interesting along these same lines um, I saw today on the news, everybody was talking about it too, was the um, lab-grown meats from, you know, oh, the cells yeah. and things like that from animals. So weird. Yeah. I mean, so is that meat? <laughs> guess yes, but it's like, like a moral it, dilemma, right? That's what I'm saying. Nothing, like, yeah, because you technically, technically died. Like, yeah, nothing's dying, but I don't know. I mean, I'm sure everybody's gonna have their own different opinion on it. You know, whether I agree, yeah, it almost seems like cloning, right? It's but very, meat. but it's interesting, like where we are in that, like yeah. technology wise. Oh, for sure, technology is crazy. The AI movies that they're making, like mm -hmm. that, no one's making. The AI is making it. <laughs> uh, my husband said he got sucked into an eight-minute AI movie over the apocalypse, and it was just created by the AI. It just spit this thing out, and he was like, "I was captivated. I would go see that movie tomorrow." <laughs> Like, okay calm down i didn't i didn't actually watch the movie myself but yeah what they're doing is crazy yeah i mean it almost makes you think like is the future just like typing in what you want how long you want the movie to be and then it'll like create your own movie for you like that would be insane that would just i mean i mean food is getting to the point you see that you remember spy kids when they oh, yeah. they had this yeah. little thing and they stuck it in the microwave and poof, there's your burger. <laughs> we've always just talked about there. that. Yeah. We've always been like, we want those packs. <laughs> I just need it. Popcorn's sort of like that, but right. not as fun. Not yeah. As, yeah. Not as diverse <laughs> and interesting yet, but Still good, but yeah, <laughs> it's crazy though. I mean, what food even is, I feel like is going to be different in 50 years, you know, just based off what we learned oh, today sure. and what, what happened today. I mean, it's, I um, hope it gets healthier. I mean, I hope there's some wake up call yeah. because there's no reason to have all these fast food restaurants. I mean, I know it's a money making business, yeah. but people are dying and yeah. I mean, something has to be done regulation wise, or I don't know. I'm not the person to do it, but just something I've noticed. And it's sad to me. Yeah. I mean, I've been a little bit obsessive about like the last couple of days looking at actually the ingredients on the, on different things. And, and I uh, made a post today about additives and preservatives, even in meats. Like you think mm -hmm. of, you're going to get some chicken at the grocery store. It's just like that. That should be just chicken. Right. But there's so much that goes into it to keep it fresh yeah. and to keep the color and to keep this and keep that. And um, I don't know, I fall in these pits of like despair when I start to like go down the, the, rabbit hole of what's in our food what's in our water what's in our air what's in our you know that's exactly what it is it's a pit of despair <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, our water man yeah Ugh. it's tough because like you is as healthy as i do try to eat when you learn something like that it's like oh man I've, i thought i've been doing so good all this time and then you <laughs> just <laughs> learn something like that and it's like what's the point yeah, yeah. It's, it's, well think about the air i don't know where you're from but we have like an air quality alert for the last month Oh, wow. And I know Canada had the fires in New York. I don't know if you saw the the 
freaking orange sky that they were having. But I mean, you talked about the water, you talked about our food, our air is is polluted too. And it's it's just like one thing after the other. You're like, where are we going to be in 50 years? I hope we're still here. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're right. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not a, a global, a, a global warming person or anything, but you know, it, it's not, things aren't getting better, unfortunately. Yeah. Makes you think really like as smart as mm-hmm. we're getting and things like that, we're not doing too much to really help ourselves beyond just like constant pleasuring, you know, just how fast can we get ourselves to feel good? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And just like excelling technology and excelling this and excelling that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and then something else that I found very interesting was whenever you were talking about those first few shows and maybe it's still kind of like a pattern that you feel yourself going through, but do you think that you have like a, um, a personality that like wants something to strive for like a goal and those shows at the beginning were like you reaching out for, having a date like a, an end point in mind to reach this body and then you know without that you kind of like went a little bit out of control and then when you had that date again it kind of gave you that structure do you feel like that that's something that you know attracts you to the sport i think so um i think that's something that attracts a lot of people to the sport is having that tangible goal um for, for me, you know, that initial initial that first show is just, you know, see if I liked it. And I, I got sucked in immediately. Um, the the other two, it wasn't really about getting back in shape for me. You know, yeah, I got I gained some weight, but <laughs> I didn't realize it until I, I matured a little bit. At that time, I thought I was huge. I thought I was just like jacked. For some reason, I, I was like in this egotistical mindset that I had just like gained so much muscle um and and so doing those shows i was like i need to do these shows because i've i'm huge now i gotta show off these games um when i and i started that prep my goal for those shows was to place so my very first show i did not place i got six out of seven girls and they only give trophies of the top five um so i didn't place and so going into those next shows my goal was to place I, i wanted to to prove that I, you know, I got the taste of it. Now I want to, I want to compete a little bit. Right. I got, I got second out of five girls in, in one of them. Um, and I got second out of two girls in the next. Um, I will attribute the, that second place out of five girls, 100% to my posing. I, I don't think I looked any better. I don't think that I was any bigger. Um, but my posing was night and day difference. I actually worked with a posing coach that, that season and had one-on-one attention with her, um, probably like five or six sessions. Um, I don't remember if I went to any group classes that season or not, but I did have that one-on-one help. So having that goal in my head of being competitive, not necessarily losing weight, it wasn't a weight loss goal for me. I, I wanted to be competitive. And then, you know, the next shows, each show I wanted to just do better um, and and actually have some muscle <laughs> growth underneath. Yeah. Does that answer that for you? Yeah. Yeah. It's, just, okay. it's interesting kind of the psychology behind why people do, you know, what yeah. they do, what, what pushes them to do that. And then at what point did you think, like, at what point did you see yourself as competitive? And what point did you see yourself as like, I'm actually like I have a real shot at doing something in the sport or getting my pro card. I wasn't really expecting to get my pro card when I got it. Um, so when I thought I could potentially be good at, at it, that was probably in 2020 after, after that first real off season, I had taken the time to, to grow. Uh, my shape had improved substantially. My, my prep was going really smooth. I was seeing lines that I had never seen before. I was, you know, my shoulders are bigger. Um, and I was, you know, during COVID, we were in this underground gym sort of situation. And I was training with other athletes. And, you know, we, we do it all the time, right? You see somebody and you just subconsciously compare yourself to them. And so I was subconsciously comparing myself to other people, but it wasn't in the sense that, oh, wow, there I could never, it was like, huh, I, I look pretty good. <laughs> um, and so being able to like see myself next to other competitors and like, 
I'm not too small for once. I'm not, I don't have, you know, a bad shape. I don't have a thick waist. I'm not here or not there. I have good balance. You know, I've been able to train with symmetry in mind and, and this is and this. And so it was about 2020 that, that I started, you know, having that little bit. When I, I went to a posing class with Steph, with Stacy Fott, um, rest in peace. She uh, died about two years ago. And I was, I was in her posing, her group class. And I was standing to the side about to do, you know, I just done my individual routine. And this was after, you know, 28, 2018, I had worked one-on-one with that coach. I had done really well with, with that. So I'd been working on my own posing for a while. And this group class was not a one-on-one side. It was a group thing. So you go and you do your routine and she'll help you here and there where you need it. Um, but I was like really proud of my routine. And I was like, let's go. I'm going to, I'm going to show them that I, that I'm, that I know what I'm doing. Right. So I do my routine and she loved it. So we're standing on the sides, like, you know, watching everybody else. And she's like, have you thought about doing nationals? And I was like, no, you <laughs> calm down. I'm not, not that big. Okay. I'm still kind of small. Um, I'm five, eight. So putting on size for, for my frame is, you know, on the tougher side since everything's longer. Um, and she was like, you, you should consider doing nationals. I, I think you do really well. And I was like, okay, I'll think about it. I messaged a friend of mine, Melissa Kelly. She's an IFBB pro here. Um, she turned pro in 2018, around the same year I started competing. And we were working together at the Y. I messaged her and I was like, hey, I sent her some pictures. Like, is, is it like crazy to think I could go to nationals? Um, and she was like, try it you know worst case it doesn't pan out but I think you have a shot so I did the show here I qualified because uh in COVID top five qualified for nationals <laughs> so I'm like hey I got third place let's go um so I, I went to nationals in junior uh, junior USA's and, and getting second place I was just like I was through the roof I have a picture um of a screenshot of my face that I'd sent to my coach. And I was like, we got second. I was just like so excited about second place. And that season like really sparked my fire. Like I, other people saw it. And when other people start to see your potential, it feels really good. Right. Um, when, when other people, I'm not saying like gassing you up when you deserve it, right. <laughs> you, should, you should definitely deserve it. And having people, who I respected say things to me, my coach, she was like, yeah, let's, let's do it. She wasn't opposed to it. Um, and then that follow through, right. Actually placing, actually like getting second against really good athletes. So yeah, I think that was about the time that I was like, this, this is something I want to pursue and could potentially be good at. And you know, I mentioned before when I did nationals, I, I didn't expect to get my pro card. I wanted it, but I will always be the person who understands that there's always the chance somebody's going to come in looking better than you. Maybe they're bigger, maybe they're tighter, maybe they, you know, their flow is better. I don't know. But going in and expecting to win the show is a good way to get your heart broken, a good way to have a depressive post show experience. Um, I, I try to go into everything with optimism. I'm like, yeah, I want to do really well. I, I hope it goes great. I got first call outs, which, you know, like I said, I, I won the overall at the battle. So I was really hoping for that first call out spot. I didn't know where I was on stage. I was standing, you know, you're standing in the line um, and they called you out, but they never moved me. So I didn't know where I was standing um, because when you're in line, he's, uh, it's frowned upon to like, look, look to the side. Um, winners focus on winning, right? We don't focus on everybody else. So I'm looking at the judges. I'm paying, you know, keeping my smile on. I had no idea where I was in that lineup and they never moved me. So I couldn't like see when, when you're, when you're moving, you can kind of like look around and see where you're going. I get off stage and I was like, how do I do guys? I don't know. She's like, my best friend, she ran backstage because she was she was there too. She's like, yeah, that's like what? I almost cried. Like I've never gotten emotional over a show before. But when she was like, "You're splitting center," I mean, that's usually first and second, right? And second place goes pro. So I'm like, I'm either getting first or second. You know, things happen, right? That's not always the case. 
you need to make sure you keep it tight for finals um because you spill over and you look like a sack of noodles they're gonna you're gonna get third or you know whatever you, you can easily drop a place but when she said that i was like because you're backstage with all these girls and they all look beautiful but one thing that you don't want to do is psych yourself out you don't know they're posing you don't know how well they can walk in their heels you don't know um how big they really are you know they, everybody looks big because we're freaking five eight that's class h <laughs> so everybody's big um and of course we judge ourselves the harshest so i'm back there just happy to be here um but it was really cool to to actually get my pro card and and that's one thing i try not to take for granted i i, I won a second place pro card and people are like why aren't you competing i'm sure you're gonna ask me that you know why haven't you done a pro deb debut yet well, well i did not win the overall at nationals i got a second place pro card um, someone beat me. So that means that other people are probably going to beat me <laughs> if I go and do a pro show. Right. Um, and I want to take the time off every off season I I've taken, I've gotten better. And so in my head, the more time off, the better I'm going to get. And you mentioned a date. I don't really have a date in mind. I, I did switch coaches and I'm with an individual now who believes when you're ready, you're ready. We're not going to necessarily pick a show date um, because you might not be ready for that show date. We're going to pick a show date when you're ready. I, I like to plan. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big planner. So I, I would really like to like have us have a date in mind, but again, we'll see where the, where the cards fall there. But that's where I'm at with like the off season mindset now is I want to take as much time as it need as I need to be truly competitive as a pro. I was competitive as an amateur, but now we're in a whole different ball ball game and I'm a little fish in a big pond. The girls winning shows are late thirties. Some of them are 50. I'm in 28. So I'm still on the younger side. Yeah. And it's interesting how like each division kind of does have that like premier time gap, right? You know, and it I think it is different for for each division for multiple reasons, but you know, just taking that time to develop and taking that time to like almost as weird as this because for other sports it's kind of a little bit different, but you almost want to like mature into the sport a little bit. Does it feel like for you that you feel better? Like you feel like you can almost judge your um judge your progress more when you're on stage or when you're um, maybe like on an, on a an longer off season and, and kind of like going through the motions and seeing that, that maybe daily or weekly picture. This podcast is sponsored by Smoking Gun Coffee, a veteran owned coffee company that strives to give back to those in need. Don't forget to use code TWR10 for a 10% discount at checkout. Looking for a supplement company that's as serious about your fitness goals as you are? Allsport Pharmaceuticals is here to help. Their top-of-the-line supplements are designed to help you get the most out of every workout with ingredients that have been scientifically proven to enhance performance and recovery. Whether you're a seasoned athlete or just starting out on your fitness journey, Allsport Pharmaceuticals has the perfect supplements to help you achieve your goals. Plus, with their commitment to quality and safety, you can trust that you're getting a product that's both effective and reliable. So what are you waiting for? Take your fitness game to the next level with all sport pharmaceuticals. Visit the website today to learn more. I, I don't like to compare myself except to my stage shots. Um, that's one reason why I don't post check-ins because it doesn't matter what I look like right now. Um, the only thing that matters is what I look like on stage. So I send my coach my check-ins and I will compare myself like growth phase to growth phase. Um, progress, I mean, as long as you're not, getting sick or slacking off on your diet you, you should always you know be going up in in a, in a sense every growth phase i've done i've been better um we do we do a growth phase and then we do a little holding phase maintenance and then i'll probably like lose a little bit of size and then we'll do another growth phase and then another maintenance and we're about to go into my third growth phase so this little timeline is just you know it's, it's going up slowly but surely and every growth phase my weak points have, have gotten better now <laughs> Have they gotten night and day difference from day one to day whatever? No. Um, but I'm also not lean. I, I think when, like you said, on show day, that's that's when it matters. So I want to come in with a uh, unrecognizable package from my nationals. I want to be able to stand up there and they'll be like, oh, yeah, she's a pro. 
Like, there's no doubt that she's, you know, still an amateur. Because I've seen people do pro debuts when they weren't really ready for it. Um, whatever their reasoning is, good for them. Um, sometimes they just they just want to do it and see see where they lie up. Maybe they just don't know. Um, I was I'm not naive. I know where my weaknesses lie and being a taller athlete is a little bit of a disadvantage because I'm going to look huge up there um, just because of my height, but I also need to like proportion it and be able to like carry it well. You know, people have such different like outlooks on kind of what you just said in, in regards to like doing a show. Should I do a show to see where I am? Should I, you know, be a hundred percent sure on, you know, being in the top, whatever, before I do a show to you, you know, let's say you're like, okay, kind of like you said, I'm going to do a show when I feel like I'm ready to do a show and I'm kind of, you know, in a spot where I can at least be competitive. But what about like the, the instance where you think you're ready, you do a show and then you don't place, you know, where you want to be even like, you're not saying you would go in with winning expectations. I'm going to be number one, but Mm -hmm. okay i want to be top whatever and you don't reach that point what does that do for you like how do you take that then if that would happen and kind of like move on with that yeah i've i've thought about that because honestly my goal is top 10 (laughs) i I would love to get top 10 my pro debut um you know it's always picking a show too if you pick a big show and there's a lot of big names and you have less chance of of making that so if if it doesn't happen and I, i don't get it my plan is to get feedback more than likely what I'm expecting it to be is conditioning um, because I do have the shape that, that they want um, the size that I'm working towards. If anything, I'm hoping I'm too big. <laughs> I'm hoping I'm too big. And then I just need to like take a little bit of time to, to downsize. Um, I don't think that will be the case though, because like I said, my, my weak points, what we're working on the most they're getting better, but they're still not. So it's my back straps. Go ahead, everybody. Go look at my stage shots. You will notice I have next to no erectors. <laughs> and I call them snakes, the ones that go up the back. And a lot of the, the girls winning have really nice erectors that go up the back. Beautiful rear dolls and, and the capped shoulders. That, this is my weaker points. I'm trying to build that up and have the depth, the density to to my physique so the plan is that when i do compete to have those things to have those things checked off the list I, i've talked with sandy she said this is what you need to do so i can't show up on stage not having what she told me to do so my plan is do what she said to do worst case i do what she said to do and now i've got maybe other things i need to work on so yeah, I mean, that's just how bodybuilding is. And, and the sport changes year to year. Um, you know, you look at Sid, when she first won her first Olympia, Sid Gillen, she's a completely different monster now. She has evolved with the sport. She has taken it to the next level. And so watching shows and, and seeing who's winning and what's winning, I need to make sure that I'm I'm going to bring that to to the stage and and for me it's always been conditioning i've never been like the leanest athlete um i was the leanest and best shaped at at my pro at, at, at national so I'm getting second place i was everything they wanted except dom was just a little bit more of what they wanted um so i i was that was my best look ever and i still wasn't like striated to the to the bone um and that's what they're wanting at the Pro Bowl. So that'll be fun. The the black and white of it, you're either doing it or you're not. And if you're doing it and it's not working, then, you know, there's probably something in your blood work or maybe digestion function or things like that. So there are, you know, deviations to, to the, to the do, uh, yes and no factor of it. Um, but re- like you said, for the most part, if you do what, what you're supposed to do, you get where you're supposed to go. And yeah. for you, what has been um, maybe a few things that you've you've learned and you've kind of uh, incorporated within your habits and routines to up your game and to kind of take your game to that next level? I did get a, a new coach. That is something that, I mean, his processes and what he requires of me in general is a whole nother, you know, different than what I was requiring of myself prior to. He has a whole check-in spreadsheet that I have to fill out. I've got measurements I've got to fill out. I have a whole 
So the accountability factor is just much higher. Um, and I knew that getting on with him was going to, you know, I'm taking this seriously. I'm paying more for coaching. I'm making this investment for my professional future. So, uh, you know, in my routine every day and I'm, I'm drinking my water, I'm taking my vitamins. I, um, one thing I, I do differently on my meal prep is I, I stagger my meal prep and I find that that sets me up for success. So I'm a busy person, um, you know, between training clients and, and working the nights and stuff. I don't always have time to like prep seven days a week. And I don't enjoy doing that either. Um, cause like the food doesn't always taste good. So like on some days I'll, I'll make my eggs. Some days I'll make my potatoes. Some days I'm making two types of fish, maybe an asparagus, and those meals, like the fish meals will last me three to four days. The eggs, I'll usually make four to five days of eggs. Um, the potatoes will last for like a week. I don't know why they last so long. Um, I'll make my rice for three days. And so every every three or four days, I'm making something different. Um, and that that's one part of my routine that I've found is, is different than other people, um, is that I stagger my meal preps a little bit. Um, you know, I go to the store once a week. Today was actually my grocery day and I get everything I need for that week. I go on Wednesdays now. I actually did change that recently. I go on Wednesdays. That way I have my weekends a little bit freer. My weekends are my family time. Um, so I go to church. Uh, we have a family dinner uh, Saturday afternoon. And then typically Saturday night, if I don't have like a, a trip or anything, my husband and I like go to the movies or we'll hang out at the house, you know, whatever we have planned for, for Saturday night. And I've just found that by going to the grocery store in the week, I'm able to be more free and present during, during the weekend. Um, routine wise, I just, you know, I drink my black, my coffee black that way come prep. I don't have to like, Oh no, my coffee. I can't have my creamers. You know, I like it that way. It's just, just who I am now. Um, I actually don't have any cardio on my plan. I only have steps, so that's pretty easy to maintain. Um, cardio when you don't have it right. <laughs> i haven't i joke with my friends because they have you know set amounts of cardio or whatever i'm like yeah i haven't touched a stair climber in a year and a half but have fun over there um when you follow your meal plan and you're training hard like my workouts are cardio in themselves i got a freaking t-bar drop set that is exhausting um my training i mean it's just part of, it's a job to me like I'm a professional athlete. I'm not, I'm not missing practice. You know, I'm going to the gym, I'm training, I'm following my log. I'm logging my lift. I have a notepad in my phone. I don't have a physical log. Um, I would just probably forget to bring it, forget a pen. There's a lot of things that go into having a physical log book. I always have my phone cause I always have my music. So I have a notepad in there that has all my logs from the last year and a half, each growth phase, each holding phase. So I can go back and look at the exercises and stuff. Um, yeah, I can't really think of any other routine esque things. Um, but those are a couple, maybe something different on, on my end that I, that I do. Um, yeah. Yeah. I like that. Um, kind of staggered meal prep. That's a really interesting idea. I've never heard anybody talk about that, but definitely takes a lot of like a lot of the time out of it for one day. I mean, I don't mm -hmm. do it as much currently, but whenever I was doing it, you know, it'd easily be three or four hours by the time you got everything out, cooked it and cleaned it and put it away and you yeah. know, packaged it up and all that kind of it's stuff. It's a but, nightmare. nightmare. Yeah. So I, yeah, by doing it that way, like you said, the cleaning is 10 times less. I'll use foil in my air fryer. So I don't have to wash the air fryer. <laughs> throw yeah, foil that's, away. that's a nice little hack. Yeah. Good, good life hack there with the air fryer. I'll do the same thing on my pan in the oven with my um, potatoes. I'll put the foil on the pan, spray it, put the potatoes on there throw it away and i don't actually i reuse the foil because i'm poor <laughs> like it's just potatoes whatever um right. but yeah so then now i don't have to clean the pan um life hack so there's a dishwasher at work i'll wash a lot of my dishes at work and then by the time i come home they're already clean um yeah it's uh it but that's like the little things people don't talk about is all those freaking dishes mm -hmm. <laughs> so many dishes yeah hop life <laughs> Yeah, every, every, and it's interesting how like you can save a little, like a minute, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes there, here and there, and how that mm -hmm. kind of ends up and makes life a little bit easier when you do yeah. kind of find some hacks when you get into it. 100%, 100%. And that, that goes, um, I don't know if you've ever read the Atomic Habit, Habits book. 
I haven't. I don't remember. I don't remember the author, but I, I read it recently. And I know he has an Instagram page as well. He's constantly posting um, little hacks and stuff for, for tra- habit tracking or habit stacking. And that's one thing by reading the book, I realized I did already was habit stack. So, you know, when I'm going somewhere, I'm like, okay, I'm going here on my way. I'm going to grab this, this, and this. And then I'm already there or, you know, by, by meal prepping while that cooking, I'm going to do this. Right. And then when I come back, that'll be done. And so little things that make your life a little bit more efficient, it, it adds up and, you know, it's time that you can't get away. You have to train, you have to do your cardio. So those other things that take up space in your life um, are, are going to be done more efficiently. If you can figure out ways to, to stack it and, and life hack um, I need a Roomba because I'm sick and tired of vacuuming. I think that would be a great life hack for me. <laughs> right? Yeah. But I got two German shepherds and they are shedding their little skins off and it's so annoying, but I love them. <laughs> yeah. I can only imagine too. My sister has one yeah. dog and she has to, you know, constantly, it's constantly awful. Be cleaning. So and that'd, awful. Be, that'd be a lot for sure. And then you have to, uh, you, you know, kind of almost like hacking for them too, you know, like, okay, we got to take them out at this time and make sure that they yes. get together at the same time. And, oh man. <laughs> One meal hack. So I eat salmon and I'll take the salmon skin and split it in two and I'll put that into their food. So they're getting their omegas and stuff. Um, they like tilapia, they like eggs. So we don't feed them a whole lot of human food, but, but that kind of stuff, I'm, I'm okay with feeding them as, as long as I know that they're getting, you know, good stuff out of it. I know people who, who throw their Tupperware away. They will eat it and throw it away. I'm like, bro, I don't live that kind of lifestyle. First of all, the environment. <laughs> Second of all, that's expensive. They're right. like, what, 10 bucks for 12 Tupperwares? Yeah. 12 will make 12 meals, which is, I eat five meals a day, so that's two days. No, I'm sorry. I can't do that. I can't do that. But, I have been known to overuse Tupperware. I have one that's cracked halfway right now. I'm still using it. <laughs> just can't let it go. <laughs> I have a um, I ha- I like, this little plastic set. It was uh, whatever that like big plastic brand is. I can't remember the name of it, but um, I, I got it from Costco and it was like twenty for ten dollars. And then mm-hmm. I got it probably six or seven months ago, and it and I'm kind of to the point there with those to where I only have a few left, but. You know, the ones, yeah. the lids are cracked and the sides are starting to They're crack. They're like sentimental at this point, you know? <laughs> right. It, 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 it represents like this, um, all this work and all this food I've made and all this yeah. food I've eaten. And it's like, I almost just want to keep one and like put it in like a little, well, you know, glass, you know, <laughs> container, glass thing. container. Well, like you said, you only have two or three left. Those guys have, have seen it. They've been through the, the mud with you. Right. <laughs> Yeah. For sure, for sure. But I know it was really good to getting to talk with you tonight. I really appreciate you coming on the podcast. It was great being here, Daniel. Thank you for reaching out. Um, I I really enjoyed listening to all of the individuals that you've had come on. I, I like the variety too. You're you're getting a good good spread of people, so it's been really cool to hear them and hear their stories and see the podcast grow too. I appreciate you saying that. And uh, if you want to, before we head out, share any of your social media or anything like that, you can go ahead and do that. Yeah. So um, I am on Instagram at Clarissa Source Flex. I have no intention of changing that name. So we should be good there. Um, good at least till the release. <laughs> yeah, right. At least till the release for sure. Um, Clarissa Source Flex. And my, I did, I'm, I'm recently got back into my YouTubes. So it's just IFBB Clarissa Fortune. Um, don't try to find me on Facebook. I only, I only add people who I know in person. So I will not add you on Facebook. I think I turned off the search me option. Oh, interesting. I, like, I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know you could do that either. Somebody told me about it. It's like a privacy setting. But yeah, uh, there's a lot of murderers out there and stalkers and stuff. And the world's mm-hmm. awful. We, we talked about the economy and the environment. But yeah, people are people are messed up. So I, I take precautions where I can. And that is one. Um so my, my Facebook is just for family. So sorry, guys. But Instagram, I do post a lot on there. Um, you're welcome to follow me. I, I share my story pretty re- pretty regularly, all the, all the fun reels and stuff. But yeah, I think those are the only two I am on right now. Um, I am an LGS elite team member. So if you are interested in some awesome apparel, let's get serious. 
code fortune save you 20 percent nice yeah. there you go with the plugs all right well like <laughs> i said plug. it was great getting to talk to with you talk with you i'll put those uh the information and stuff where people can find you down in the description so go check that out and uh other than that have a great rest of your night awesome i appreciate it have a good one if you're tired of searching for a coach or trainer somebody who knows what they're talking about and has experience make sure you go check out the new Coaches Corner on weightroompodcast.com. You can find quality, qualified coaches to help you achieve your goals, whether that's in bodybuilding or just general fitness. Stop wasting time and start achieving your goals today. The link to the Coaches Corner is down in the description below.